Welcome to another episode of Resilient Riches. We have a tremendous guest for you, world famous, world known, world renowned, Kendall Cross, the master, one of the top wrestling stories and top wrestling people in the world in history. Kendall Cross, an Olympic gold medalist. He was Olympic gold medalist in 1996 in the Summer Olympics in Atlanta. He was a, I want to say, a three-time U.S. national champion. Um, he won. He was a. He was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2002. World Cup champion, uh, bronze medalist at, at at the Worlds. He's originally from Oklahoma. I want to say. Yeah. And I know you got two kids. Age of how old are you now, Kendall? Fifty-five. I'm fifty-five. Fifty-five years old. So Kendall, you look great. I thought you were forty-five. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to <laughs> say too young because then people people say my dad also <laughs> looks looks old, looks young, but he's still old. But <laughs> Kendall, thanks so much for coming on. Um, really excited to get to know you. Really excited for this conversation. Can you give us a little background about you and uh, tell us kind of what's what's going on with you? Yeah, sure. So you know, I, um, but like you mentioned, I'm from Oklahoma. I actually was born in Montana and actually started wrestling while I was in Montana. I, I lived there until my parents, my, my father was, was transferred to Oklahoma. He's in the garment industry. So I started wrestling in Montana, but really gravitated to the sport once we moved to Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, if, if you don't know, it's a wrestling state. It's a real hotbed in terms of uh, the sport, you know. And so, you know, I, I lived in Oklahoma till I was out of college. Um, I wrestled all through my uh, elementary school years, junior high, high school in Oklahoma, and then stayed in the state and wrestled at Oklahoma State University, who's where they're, you know, Oklahoma State University is just um, absolutely the most successful program in the history of wrestling, you know, like 34 NCAA team titles, wow. you know, versus the, you know, the Iowa with roughly 20 and Penn state right there. Penn state's kind of the, the team of, of late, but um, yeah, I, I wrestled in a moving to Oklahoma was a, an amazing, just a opportunity for me uh, being in this sport. It was a uh, the place to be. Yeah. John Smith. And, uh, so after college, I, I pursued, making an Olympic team. I had a couple of guys that were on my team that, that I saw and watched compete in the Olympics. Um, I wasn't the best at the time, like coming out of, out of college, I wasn't the best guy in, at my weight, but I was one of them. And so, um, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, throw my hat in the ring and, and try to make an Olympic team. And then making an Olympic team led me to uh, wanting to get a medal, you know? And so I wrestled in two Olympics and, um, won the second one. My first one, I'll call my dry run because I, uh, j you know, I did great, but, uh, didn't win, didn't medal, but it showed me where I was. And, um, so I continued and, and trained for another four years for a second one that led me to, uh, the 96 Olympics. Amazing. And after yeah. the Olympics, I moved to Boston, Massachusetts and got into the financial services business. So I was with Merrill Lynch for five years and, and then, um, back into wrestling. My wife and kids, we moved to Dallas. Um, I coached my son through his, his, uh, early years and in high school. And, um, then in 2017, right when my son was graduating, my daughter was a sophomore in high school. Um, I got an, an opportunity to come up to New York city mm -hmm. and run a regional training center, which is under the umbrella of USA wrestling. It, we have, multiple training centers around the country that are partnered with colleges and universities. So I moved up here and honestly, I, I had, for me, it's a dream job. I'm working with guys who are trying to make our world and Olympic teams and, you know, try to, trying to help them do what I did. And um, so it's just a, a dream job. You know, we have both women's and men's wrestlers or athletes in our program and um, just a, uh, Love what I do. And so, yeah, that kind of brings me current. Your kids are, how did your son do? He was, a, he won, he won a couple state titles in Texas. Nice. And while we were living in Dallas, you know, he, uh, he actually didn't get serious about the sport until he was around the eighth, ninth grade. He was a soccer head, Yeah. you know, and, and I didn't want to, it wasn't really my intention to try to have him focus on wrestling. Cause I just, I knew that coming up, 
under me or through me, you know, the kind of pressures that he might deal with and try, you know, the, the comparisons and, you know, so once he did want to commit himself to the sport, then I, then I dove in, you know, and, and helped him out. And I coached you his. Think that come from him first. Was that, was that, how was that? Was that come from him first? Coaching exactly. him? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I wrestling, I, as you both would know, wrestling's hard and I, I can't imagine doing it without loving it, you know? And so I just wasn't going to, you know, with my son, I wasn't going to um, pressure him to do it and, and uh, take that route. And so it was, I was honestly okay with it. I remember the first time that when he was a kid when he was like six years old, seven years old, I took him to a, 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 a youth practice and, you know, let him wrestle around with the guys. And he did that for two, three, four sessions. And then on, I remember, uh, I remember like it was yesterday, I was, I was driving home from a practice and, you know, I could catch him in my rear view mirror because he's sitting in the car seat in the back. Right. And I'm driving and I'm like, so Kennedy, how, how, how you, uh, how you liking it? And he's like, yeah, dad, I don't think wrestling is going to be my thing. <laughs> If you don't no, see yourself right away. Inside. Yeah, he's got <laughs> hot inside. Like, oh, oh, you know, what do you say to that? Um, of course. I was like, well, that's, that's fine. But, you know, but inside, you know, I was like, oh, my God. wow. But, you know, I just knew that you know, there was no uh, – you don't pressure anybody into wrestling. It's too hard. It's an amazing, it's an amazing sport. There's, when we see people, there's two sides that we see people. There's, and, and success and, and wealth and everything like that. People, there's two sides. One is people will just inherit a pile of money. So it's those super talented wrestlers that are just, just they get in on, they get on the mat and all of a sudden they're just pinning everybody. Nobody can touch them. And then there's the incremental wrestlers who over always overcome the people with just talent because the talent people get lazy because it's been so easy for them in life. It's when you get into wrestling, like for me, the first time I wrestled, I got my ass kicked. Then I lost all my matches the first year. And then I won one match the second year. Then I won five matches, 15 matches. And I was undefeated and took this, the, the Jewish national championship, which is like a, I wouldn't even call it a district champion in terms of your world. But in general, it, it builds over time. It's an incrementally growth sport. So when young kids are going to, into practice, and I said that I say this to my nephews all the time, you're going to lose for a long time, but as you oh, get, you as froze. you stay resilient and get through it, you're going to get better and better and better. And 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 once you commit to that and commit to the to incremental growth, success is is the limit. Which sounds like kind of like your background that you weren't the best, but you always you just kept growing and building and building. Is that is that a fair That's assessment? Exactly it. That's exactly it. You know, I I remember um, when I was a kid wanting my dad to take me to the state tournament, and then you know elementary state tournament and I, I get my, my, uh, you know, I cut my teeth in that arena. And then, you know, I end up winning a state title in high school. Yeah. And then that state title leads me on to thinking bigger. And so like you say, incrementally, I'm like, yeah. okay, in one state, I didn't win all states. You know, I, I, I won one year out of my three years, you know, and if you think about where yeah. I ended up Olympic champion, I was a, a state champion in high school at third at state my senior year. Yeah. So I, I just wasn't the best, but I was getting there. And, um, you know, in college, you going to Oklahoma state, I, the, the, um, most of these guys, the, the good ones are two time, three time NCAA champions. And yeah. so I of course set my goal to do that. And I won one and it was my junior year. I got third, my senior year. It's kind of yeah. very similar to my high school. Just to experience. go back for a second, what you're and talking then, about before. So, and I also, I want to, yeah, you and I want to thank our, my oldest son, Moshe for introducing us and uh, having you come on, but he's a big okay. wrestler. And he, I think he's got his three sons also in wrestling. And I think he feels some, sometimes they'll say, Oh, I don't think wrestling's for me. And it, 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 it's like an arrow through his heart. He tells me. I know. I, yeah, I don't, that didn't. Yeah. I was the same way. It just, I didn't just, I didn't appear that way. Oh, you can't. Like, yeah, no, you, you can't. Can. Sure. Whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. It's gotta be them. It really does. And, and, um, I was overly um, aware, mindful of my relationship with wrestling and with my son. And I didn't want it to be that he had these expectations of having to be good. You know, I Absolutely. just wanted him to enjoy it, man. Have fun. 
it's know. it's all about that which it sounds and we were talking before a little bit about you working at merrill lynch and the first thing you said was i hated it and i worked at merrill lynch for a few months and i had a very similar passion to hating it at merrill lynch and wanting to do things that i was passionate about i, I didn't want to wake up any day that wasn't my own i didn't want to live somebody else's dream which it sounds like you've always lived your dreams um what what are you doing now because it sounds like you never will do something that you don't love. And also you teach that. And I know from a few of your wrestlers, it's the same thing. It's like, do what you love, do what you're passionate about, do what you're happy with, do what you enjoy. What are you doing now? And, and obviously you're coaching and you said it's a dream job. Do you, are you implementing the same thought processes that you have on yourself, on your wrestlers? And are they getting it? Is that what's, what they're coming to and that what they're teaching? Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I can only my my biggest reference point on trying to help these guys get to where they want to go, which is to qualify for the Olympics, wrestle in the Olympics, get on the podium. You know, I think that is the ultimate goal in our sport. That's our professional career. Yeah. Beyond college, you know, that's the, that's the next step. You know, we don't have pro football, pro baseball, basketball. You know, we're it, in wrestling. It's the Olympics. And um, so to help them get to where they want to go, I reference myself a lot, not necessarily saying when I did this, but it, I just, um, you know, my mantra would be kind of where, what I did and how I handled the pressures, um, how the technique that is, that is shown, you know, um, I tailor it to each of them because, you know, at this level, they're all different and they're all very highly successful already, um, highly motivated. And so really for me, it's just kind of, you know, riding the ship, just bump it left, bump it right and keep them on the path that they need to be on. But yeah, I, I go back to my experiences to help them along. Yeah. We find coaching and, 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 and financial services and, and in anything, if you tell somebody what to do, they typically don't do it. But if you share, if you, it's, we call it like experience shares and it's, it's, all the top executives in the world are doing exactly what you're doing, which it sounds like it kind of comes natural to you, which is why you're such a good coach is instead of telling them what to do, you're giving experiences on life. And this is what happened to me. Does that relate to you? And typically people will, will yeah. relate to that more than being told because you can't understand anybody else, but you can understand yourself and, ex and explain that to younger people and younger generations. Yeah. You know, I, I find, I find what I'm doing now is challenging. I, I concern myself with, man, am I saying, am I doing the right thing? This kid's need, this kid, I think he needs this, but you know, I don't know. So, you know, what you treat each of them differently because they're just individuals. You got to do the best you yeah. can. You got to do what you think is like, yeah. I mean, it's like with us also with financial services, we have to do what we think is the right thing for them and have confidence and, and yeah. move on from there. I mean, that's. Yeah. I find it challenging because they're just super high level athletes very uh type a and just um the the best kind of kid you can imagine you know all of the other you know even in you know through the college ranks you've got um in wrestling or in, in any sport really just a level of of athlete that is that only go that they'll go so high and then that next level of athlete yeah. is the athlete that i'm working with yeah absolutely and so they're just uh it's a challenge to feel like um that, uh, that I'm doing but the right thing. But to get thing, to that you know, athlete that goes to the next, is it is it really like the skill level or is it more like a mental type of thing? You know, is it more their resiliency that that, that spurs them on? Because I, I even noticed it with your ear and Moshe and my own kids that, you know, sometimes it might not be the highest amount of skill and talent, like you said, but just they have the inside, it just pushes them and they have that motivation and desire to be the best. I would say attitude. And it, and it, the attitude began for them, for myself at a pretty early age. And when I say early, maybe, uh, going into college. And I call that early just because that's where you really jump levels or, you know, you, your, your skill sets, maybe when you're younger, it's more talent based, but then that next, you know, there are a lot of talented kids, but the next level is attitude. So you develop that talent and you, um, you work through the ins and outs of being very, very good at something. And that takes attitude. How are you coaching that? The attitude? How are you training people? Because attitude will get them 
to the next stage and to the next level, but it requires somebody to fine tune in to really crystallize them. How are you coaching that? What techniques are you, you know, using? Well, with this level of guy, that's yeah. like the least, the, the piece that I teach the least because they have it. These guys are motivated. They are, I, I, it's, you know, I, it's really cool to just get up and be around this level of individual because they're, man, they're motivated. They're, they're obviously talented. You know, I'd say where, where my biggest piece is the technical side, yeah, the, the tactical, the strategic side of what they're doing, planning for certain opponents, developing areas that they need to develop and learning how to avoid areas that they're not good at. You know, the attitude, I, I think I'm, what I get is I inherit a really amazing attitude. Really? Is that, is that what you love? You love working with these guys because it, it's, it's energy. Your, your, your success is going to be the five people you, you surround yourself with the most. So you have five people who are just excited to be there and just honored to be in this position. They're super high level athletes. And really, I find that these guys and you could be successful in anything that they choose, that you choose, but they choose to be dedicated to something that is the most grueling sport out there. I mean, yes. I, I don't care. I don't care what boxers say. I don't care what, what anybody else said, tennis. Oh, it's so, ch my wife goes, Oh, tennis is the hardest sport. I go, you don't even know what a minute of wrestling really is because that's like 10 tennis matches in a minute of wrestling when you're really going against a good guy. Um, but it, it's, it's awesome to be surrounded by these types of people. Are they coming to you a lot for their pro own? Pro Cause these are young. They're young. I mean, they're in their early twenties. I'm assuming some of them probably in their late teens. Early yeah, early, are they coming early, to you for like life advice? Like, Hey, I want to get married. Or I want to, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about this. Or I'm thinking about that job. Like, are what's the off the mat coaching that you're doing? Cause it must be all every other day. Yeah. And we, we also travel to, to get together a lot, you know, no, no marriage advice. <laughs> so, you know, really? I really it's smart to stay clear of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get into the stuff that I don't, no, I want to, don't get out in front of my skis, you know. <laughs> it's hard enough as it is just for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So you know, I, we, our relationship is centered around wrestling, and so that tends to be you know, even when we travel. You know, of course, we get off subject, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's mostly centered around wrestling. You know, it's it's a coach athlete relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so yeah, I haven't. Told them to make anything. I They'll get just, you. How, how are yeah. you getting these guys to the next level? What's your tech and what's your technique? Well, one exposure to the very best wrestling in the world, you know, and so that we we travel with them. We we um, take them. Well, before Russia closed for us, yeah. we were going there a lot, and particularly t in the uh, Caucasus region. Where uh, you know Dagestan, Southern Russia, Dagestan, Ossetia, um, those areas. Um, we were going to Ukraine for training camps and then going to competitions in those areas. You know the the best wrestling in the world. You can boil it down to that area, that region yeah. of the world. Dagestan, especially. Dagestan yes. is very yeah. serious. Best UFC fighters mountains. in the world. Yeah, Turkey. Iran, Southern Russia, it's an amazing, amazing place to get exposure with the best wrestlers in the world. And so that's one piece, you know, is exposure, you know, and just um, another piece of it is, is really being able to identify and hone in on their strengths and weaknesses and develop their strengths um, maybe strengthen their weaknesses or at least learn how to avoid their weaknesses. How many people, how many people in and the group? So, how many people are you training? Well, at any one time we've got, we, we, we've, including our women, we've got, let me see, one, four, five, six, seven, eight resident athletes. Um, we've just recently narrowed it down a little bit. We've pared back, pared down the numbers. Um, but our room, then we have, you know, people that we have athletes that come in and work out with us that are in the area at that level. Um, and then we've got, you know, a few people in our orbit that come in and, and work out like, like MB, you know, MB comes and works out with us and usually brings a partner, but uh, we have, 
you know, at any one time in our, our room could have 12, 13, 14, 15 athletes that are training at a pretty high level. Yeah. The but um, I would say normally seven, eight, wow. seven, eight, six, seven, eight athletes that we work with consistently that we're pouring ourselves into, you know, myself and Valentin Kalika, you know, I, he, he's a, the other coach. Yeah. You know, Valentin brings a whole, a different take on the sport that I have. We, he's, um, was, he wrestled for the Soviet union. And so we get that model of wrestling that is included in our, in our coaching. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. really, it's a yeah, cool you mix. Co- you coached, uh, a meet, uh, you, um, you coached a meet, right? Uh, Valentin did. Oh, Valentin, yeah, Valentin actually Helen. brought Amit Aylor to um, the New York City Regional Training Center. Yeah, yeah. Special, special girl. You know, she's um, she's incredible. She's incredible. I mean, two. T- she's already world champion. She's gone there second. World two time world champion at the senior level, which means you know, like we're talking about if it's if it's if it's uh, football, it's it's the NFL. Yeah, and dominant. she is 19 years old and has won two wow. world titles. She's dominant, and and we know we know we we know we love Valentin. He's he's an amazing. You could see he's an amazing coach. He's fully in. He's fully dedicated. Everything he does is pure passion. We we know Val. We know his background. What what was your pre wrestling pre deciding that this is something that you're going to do and really commit to and really find your heart to to post and then obviously can you talk a little bit about your olympic medal uh your olympic gold i know you got sixth in the in the year before which is still in the in the olympics before that which is still an incredible feat it's like it's still something else people go home to saying hey i was a usa olympian just to and qualify. they've been just getting to in qual- the top just to qualify. Yeah, from our qualify. perspective is amazing yeah so can you yeah. find can you can you tell us your yeah. moment that you decided hey I'm not, and you probably got beaten down a hundred thousand times. I see the cauliflower ear, which I'm sure you got beaten down all the time, but you kept pushing and pushing and pushing. So for our listeners out there, when you get pushed down, it's very hard and it takes a very special person to get back up and to keep on going and to keep pushing and to keep driving and to keep building to and get to that level of success, which is incredibly, incredibly rare. Where did you build that resilience? What was that moment for you that you said, I'll never just just uh, settle for mediocrity? I'll say, yeah, Eric, it happened over time. You know, uh, just the, uh, where I got to that point where I could say that, you know, for, I, I think one thing that I would s- start out with saying is that, man, I just loved it. I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed the, the fight, you know, not, the, not necessarily the physicality of wrestling, I enjoyed the strategy of it and the, like the chess part of wrestling, like my move, his move, he does, I do. I, you know, just, I react or I act, he reacts. And what am I going to do from there? And so I just really enjoyed that piece. I, I was, uh, I think I have an, I do, I, I have an addictive personality and I really got addicted to the win, the win, getting my hand raised. I was out there by myself. You know, if you think about wrestling, it's you are out there by yourself in a singlet, no less. You know, how more exposed can you be? And and so um, and especially at a young age where it started to happen for me was in my teens, in my early teens. I'd wrestled since I was like six, but nothing. It didn't really take until I started having success in my teens and then I wanted, and I just really wanted to be good, you know. I um, so it started there, but I, I, I loved it. And once I got to a certain level, I just I yearned for the next level. And so, you know, winning state. Now I want to, I want to, I want to go to a top notch, top notch college and win the NCAA's. And that was the new goal. And, and be, you know, I was bold in my goal setting along the way. And then the next level would be, you know, winning the NCAAs. Well, let's let's win the Olympics. But that defining moment that you're talking about, I want to say it happened in college, where um, I, I mentioned to you earlier before we got on the podcast. You know, I I wasn't the best one. I wasn't I wasn't heads above my field, um, but I I knew that I was one of them. 
And one thing that I like almost to a fault, one thing that I really live by is optimi- just optimism. And so uh, I just thought I could. And I gave myself a chance. And, you know, I was like, okay, let, you know, I can do this. I can make an Olympic team. I can win a medal. And even though I wasn't good enough, not even the best in the U.S., I gave myself a chance in my own mind. I gave myself a chance. Like So, God, I wouldn't say it's a divining moment, but over time and then especially, you know, in those years when I was in college, that's where I really formed the attitude and the wherewithal to want to take it to the highest. You probably had a certain yeah, point that you realize, wow, you know what? I can do this. I can go to the Olympics. There's nothing, yeah. there's no reason for me not to be able to do it. Yeah. yeah why not me? Way. You know, why not me? Yep. And, I just, and, and that's a, I think that that's something yeah. that just generally is, is a kind of a hard thing for a kid to say to himself is, Hey, what, you know, why not me? You know, and you have the, you have the, the work that you put in the work ethic that you put in behind it to get to that point. And then you're able to say, if you can, Hey, why not me, man? I can do this. Yeah. Well, I, we grew up. So, you, so, you know, we grew up in a, in a, in an Orthodox Jewish town and we were not a success. Like we were not a wealthy family and we were surrounded by this wealth. And I had that same mentality. I said, they're not better than like, they're, they're normal people. Like number yeah. for me, the confidence that I got was from wrestling and, and I was taught, when you're, I was skinny, I was small, I didn't have much meat on me. So I went, all right, my coach at the time went, okay, you know what you could be good at and be better than everybody else at is pull-ups. So do one pull-up and then two pull-ups and then five pull-ups, then 10 pull-ups and 15 pull-ups and 20, then 30, then 40 pull-ups in a row, then 50 in a row. Then, then I, when I was in the army in Israel, I would do pull-up competitions against the top guys, like the, the top, top guys in the entire army. And I'd be beating the crap out of all of them because it gave me confidence to know, you know, I could do more pull-ups than you and I can beat you. And, and it leveled the playing field. So even now we talk to some of the, we talk to billionaires. We talk to you. We talk to everybody that we can possibly talk to. And we don't have that intimidation because it's that one, which I wish that you have a big plaque behind you in your wrestling room that says, why not me? Cause that is so real because there is the, the, the roof that you set in life. The ceiling is your ceiling because you built the house. So if you break off the roof, the sky's the limit and the stars are the limit. And for those who are truly motivated in the attitude, there is no limit for them. And that's probably why you hated financial services because you went, this isn't me. This is not, I don't have the goals to make money. That's not your ambitions in life. Your ambition is to be the most successful, to be in this sport, to understand the strategy, it's a it's a completely different ma- mentality. It's a it's a ma- I love it. Let me, I let think me just tell you a little story if, about if Moshe. You, so Moshe, when he first started wrestling, was very fat. I don't know if you knew this. So the first time he comes down, the first hair. time he comes down in his singlet, he looks like. Oh, I would love to see a picture of Moshe. He looks like a bowling ball. He hair. looks like a pear. We all start laughing. We all start laughing at him. But you know, he had that perseverance. Also, all the kids, like your ears talking about, all the kids had that. And for some reason, he decided one day that he was going to lose all the weight. He started eating a can of tuna a day, no mayonnaise. That's it. And he jogged around the school where he was during lunchtime. And within three weeks, it was it was gone, never to return. Wow. Yeah. He still eats. Now he changed that can of tuna to like 15 cans. Now he yeah. off. He <laughs> if you off, go out so for dinner, like, it's... Yeah, that's what that's what sport can do for you. You know, of course, you know, wrestling's our sport, but man, sport is such a uh, a valuable tool for gaining confidence in yourself and absolutely playing with uh, playing well with others and having rules and and delayed gratification it's such a sport is such a cool thing you know i know that it's it's yeah amazing. it really is it, it, it so what's prepares. the next incre- incremental goal for you what's i mean obviously what i'm seeing now from an outsider and i'm no expert like you obviously but from what, what i'm seeing from an outsider is the usa wrestling team is getting better and better and better every single year and instead of one superstar that's coming in and dominating the field there's now two three four five superstars and we're like the usa wrestling team i i, I don't know if i'm i could be speaking out of turn i think they're like the best overall team that they've ever been is number one is that true and also where do you see the usa wrestling team going right now 
Well, it's only going to get better in the next five years. You know, um, do I see it the way you see it? Yes, we are. Um, we're in like a golden era yeah. of, of um, in our sport at the uh, Olympic and the world and Olympic level. It's it's really cool to see. Um, I do think, um, you know, if I were to give it a reason, I, I would say that it's a studier's game now. And yeah. the kids in our, in our country, I, I'm sure it happens all over the world, but our kids have um, the ones that want to see and know of any kind of technique or tactic, they can find it immediately with these. And, and so they have access to it through their phones. And, and um, so I, know, I know that that's a, a huge piece of it just because of the level that they're wrestling. They uh, have been exposed to so much more. And so that it being a studier's game, you know, we've got a lot of kids who just are really passionate about the sport and they've looked into it and they go to camps, they go to clinics, they, they, they see their taught their, their heroes on their phones every day if they want, you know, how much do you want to look at wrestling? Well, you can look at as much as you want. And I think it has really benefited um, our, uh, our country. Yeah. And then now these kids are seeing the David Taylors and the Jordan Burroughs and the Kyle Dakes and the Kyle Snyders winning at the highest level. And why, why can't me? they do it? Yep. Why can't they? And, and, the, and they, uh, there will be a subset of those kids that think they can, like they can do it. I, I, I'm do They expect it. They, ex they, they're seeing their their heroes win, and they're they're going to be the next ones. And so it could just perpetuate itself. You know, I see very good things for U.S. wrestling. Amazing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm seeing it also from a from a bystander, from somebody who loves and endorses every every second I talk about wrestling. We've given to wrestling. We we love we love what's happening and it changes honestly it changes lives i mean how many u.s presidents were wrestlers i mean it's like countless how many it, it, I, I think john kerry was a wrestler bush was a wrestler like all these people the most successful people in yeah. the world are we're all wrestlers because it teaches such a specific discipline and what i love how you say what you say is really it's strategy and in everything it's strategy it's they say a i say b they say c they say d and i and i win or i close yeah. or i get the sale or i or I land the job and, and breaking down all, all those action moments in life into a yeah. strategy can really help people be more and more successful. And the most successful people I know follow the script, follow the script and follow the strategy that they put in place 10 moves ago. So they yeah. do a B C that's already planned out. It's the same thing as chess. So it's the same thing as wrestling. It just happens to be that you're using your body. But there's, you can follow that strategy. And it's the same thing that it sounds like what you're doing for your guys is that you have a strategy for them in place and you're incrementally growing, growing them. Um, what we love to do is, is part of what we always do is, is we're big. We love to give to charity. We love to, uh, we love to give to causes that are important for our guests. Can you tell us something about that you're passionate about? Um, and then we'd, we'd love to give a donation of $1,000 to whoever charity of your choice. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then also, I got to hear about your Olympic gold. And how old were you when you did the Olympic gold? I mean, it's not, I just try to calculate in my mind. You must have been late 20s. I was 28. It's not a young you know, man. It's not so young. Graduated college, in, no. graduated college in 90 and then wrestled through two Olympics. And, you know, right about when I was starting to get my man strength and, and um, my wisdom is when it happened. I think that's pretty normal. You know, if you think about a, the the uh, the um, average age of a professional athlete, you know, when they're at their peak, um, it's in their late twenties, early thirties. You know, and so that was uh, that's how it happened for me. Yeah, Dad, and just so you know, just so you know, Dad, Kendall beat a beat a Canadian. Okay. So okay. Was, sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, the Canadian. Canadian. He's actually so the Soviet Union had, had broken up in 90, 90, 89, 90, 91, yeah. 92, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of um, Soviets flee the country, and it was one of those athletes that ended up in Canada. Oh, really? He was so it wasn't really a Canadian. Canadian. No, Russian. he was. He didn't. He was a a yeah. Russian. It's like okay, Israel. Good. Yeah. They should really change that. They should really change that. He was wrestling like these Israelis, but they're really Russians. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's a huge. It's yeah. a huge difference between Canada and Russia. So I really yeah, think that. Yeah. I kinda, would petition. Yeah. I, was, to, I always go. I always end up. I always end up going. Hey, wait, wait. Yes, I wrestled Canada, <laughs> but he was a Russian. Yeah, you know, it's really the right thing. It's really fair, and it's honestly it, – you're getting a disservice by people saying that you'd be the Canadians, and I apologize for my ignorance. <laughs> no, but it's all right. T- tell, us about, tell us about your charity, um, what you're involved okay. in, and, and where you'd like to place the money. Well, geez, uh, I, I can – I am in the midst of a fundraising campaign for my regional training center. All right. And I, I cannot um, think of a better um, – organization for you to donate a thousand dollars i by the way i appreciate that if you if you will that so my the new york city regional training center we're a nonprofit. we are funded privately um we are under the umbrella of usa wrestling we uh are, we're a nonprofit again and, and privately funded we, we partner with columbia university so a lot of our donors tend to be columbia alums and but we are uh in a position right now where you know, we um, do our, you know, wrestling is a, I hate to call it this, but wrestling is a donation sport. Of course. It's not a, uh, it's, 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 it's not a revenue generator, you know, and it's, um, it's we've got a lot of information for it's the Valentine, so we understand exactly what this, what's the what you're up against. Yeah. It's, it's, you don't need money to wrestle. You just need a pair of shoes and many people don't even have shoes. You don't need it. That, yeah, training, yeah, training environment. You know, one of the things that was incredibly important for me as an athlete, you know, through two Olympic cycles was creating the most ideal training environment that I could. And so I was out, you know, at the time, this is, you know, 25 years ago ish. And, um, you know, I was out talking to my congressman about in, in the state of Oklahoma asking to, they would help me fundraise. We didn't really have this rain, this regional training center model that really helped propel our guys upward. You know, and I would say, you know, to back to talking about how good we are right now, this regional training center model that we have is, is largely responsible for the environment that these guys need to get to the Olympic medal, you know, get to the Olympic podium. Absolutely. Win a medal. Absolutely. I find that these guys, there's a lot of money watching that to watch the Olympics and to, and to, to see them get there, but the guys are not making money and the sports are not really being endorsed. In some other countries, it's like you're you're like the king, but for wrestling, which is the oldest sport, a huge sport in the U.S., it's not as, I, would, I don't want to say commercialized, but it's not as financially driven because it's the people who wrestle are not financially driven people. Like you just... You're getting the the salt of the earth, some of the best people in the world, just and quality people that, and especially yeah. the ones that are more and more committed. So it's not really financially driven, but there's huge money being behind it, watching them wrestle and watching when you were wrestling. But it's not really translating to the athlete, which is a big problem. And and we're a huge proponent. I mean, this is changing people's lives, and the, and the people that you're coaching, number one, pride to the U.S. and all that's incredibly important. But they're also coaching other people, and they're coaching their kids and their coaching their communities and you're really changing people's lives beat the streets was a whole was a whole campaign to get people off the streets so that they can wrestle and and they can they can level and they can learn and they can mentors and they can get taught i mean i i put a lot of my success to wrestling and and we were talking to, to kosha dills who's who's somebody who also wrestled for Rutgers two years he's a he's a famous jewish rapper mm-hmm. which is meaning there's only like three of them so he's the most famous so it's not, it's like MB at the yeah. podium, one, two, and three, he's tied for third, but <laughs> I don't know how he gets there, but, um, <laughs> it's always, but it's always a he was, he was MB. also talking, no matter what, it's always, it's a, always that's a all that winning MB it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. He, what, what he was saying was that the amount of, because of wrestling, he was able to overcome a drug addiction later in life because he used that same exact, that same concept. He, he was able to get out of rehab. He then coached people. He then taught people. He's able to persevere. He says he gets booed off stage. He goes, I got booed off wrestling matches all the time. I lost wrestling matches. Nothing's worse than losing a wrestling match in front of all your yeah. friends and family. Boo- getting booed off stage yeah. is nothing to that. So it, it was an amazing I can interview. To that. I can relate to that. I've, I've had my own struggles um, that uh, I've had to overcome. You know, so you can't be successful and, without and so overcoming forth. struggle. One way or another. It's just, yeah. it's just not the way it is. Yeah. But we're happy to do Happy yeah. to make the uh, the contribution. We know how it is. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, we uh, you know, wrestlers don't wrestle for the money. 
No. You know, and we, if they are, right. they're in the wrong sport. The but, you know, like we don't, you know, wrestlers, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's pure. You know, these guys are, they want to win. They want to win at the highest level that we have. And um, I want to help them get there. You know, I, you know, you, I just asked me, I'll, I'll double back a little bit. I mean, what, what are my goals or what, what am I, what, what I set my goals on now? I want to see my athletes. I want to see them accomplish their goals. And most of them, their goals is, are to be in the Olympics. And, and so I, it would be a, it would be great as, as their coach to just have that happen. You know, yeah. and if my, if my athletes are, are happy with their career, happy, just happy, I think I'm. Well, it's a funny thing right. because, you know, Moshe and Yair and my other son, uh, Shui, he's living in Israel now. They all coached uh, also afterwards. They all gave back. They all coached. And, and you know, they all felt that same type of, of, uh, of response. I think they want, you want your guys to succeed. And when I go to the matches and I put in my hours like your mother, as you know, I put many hours in also, but you can see like you're passionate. You want them to succeed just like, 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 like your ear did on his match. Your ear wants them to succeed. So I know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, yeah. do you find that wrestling was something that helped you overcome? You said addiction and things like that. Did you find that, that the wrestling mentality, what, what, what was the mentality that allowed you to overcome these challenges? Well, it was certainly wrestling. I think that's, I, yes, that, is absolutely something that benefited me when I needed to make some tough decisions about the direction of my life. You know, um, I think we can all, if you've wrestled, you freaking, you know, it, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's, you, um, it's just, it's such a, uh, it's such a character builder and you have these experiences that you've gone through that are, you know, wrestling based, but they just, they translate the delayed gratification the, uh, the discipline also, the discipline I've seen, you know, I would see my guys, you know, we'd be around the dining room table before a match. They'd all be in like heavy sweatshirts and blankets because they're trying to cut down on the weight, you know. So, you know, what about yeah. eating something? Oh, just I'll have a carrot or something or a drink of water. Yeah. You know, these guys, they're, you know, they're suffering, you know, because they want to go, they want to cut weight so that they can meet the, yeah. and they, you know, that's all they care about. They just want to, they just want to get yeah. it. It, uh, it, instills a, it instills a lot of discipline and, but yeah, you know, other sports too, but you know, wrestling, I just, it, 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 it's, it's been my experience. There's nothing like it. There's nothing, yeah, there's nothing like, like, it. like it. I, I will yeah. blanket state it. There's nothing like it. I don't care what other sport you, there is nothing like wrestling. It is the best sport for that. Yeah, we're we're speaking amongst the choir here. We're speaking amongst the choir, but we're going to convince some other people. And I'm going to yeah, send yeah. this to my wife, and my wife is going to realize the reason why my two year old is going to be wrestling soon is because it makes people. And it, and when yeah. life life, there are always challenges, and when you have you know, something, you know what I you know what I said about my son, um, and I still say it about my son because you know we have a, oftentimes conversation. Hey, what how'd your son do? You know, and um. Uh, my blanket statement on my son's wrestling is that he did it. You know, yes, he won two state titles in Texas, but that wasn't really, okay, that's good. But that really wasn't the end game for me. He, he wrestled long enough that he got the lesson. And that's cool. Wrestling has a lesson and it's, it's a powerful one. Um, and it's, what it's, it? it's, what, it's what free, it's what kids need. What's the lesson? Well, what we've talked about, um, determination, uh, discipline, um, saying you're going to do something and you do it. Um, the, just the whole process of making weight, aside from having to go right out there and wrestle after you, after you've made weight. Um, you know, the lesson is being able to um, focus on a technical piece of your wrestling to the point where it starts to be, you start to be able to use it in practice or use it in tournaments, competitions, work, putting your work in and seeing the results later, delayed gratification. You know, that's a big one. Think delayed about gratification it. is huge. You've said that delayed 20 times. I love it. Life it's huge. a huge can, life lesson for can, everything in life. Yeah. If you can put off, something that you want and prepare for it for X 
period of time and then you get it because you did the work behind it, 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 um, it gives you an amazing sense of confidence. It's a that's lesson. A, that's what it's all the financial lesson. services is. It's what the we lesson. Do. Delayed gratification but is the doing lesson. All financial delayed services. Delayed gratification that's what we, is that's the what planning. We, that's what we promote. You do the delayed gratification now, so later on in retirement, and when you need the money, you're going to have it. That's all. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I wish I'd paid attention to that with with no, money. no wrestling. <laughs> not, we, so we talk about this. Wrestling's a pure sport. It's not a money sport. But we yeah. do. Um, I got to ask you a question before before we finish. I got to. You have a shoe. How'd that happen? Oh yeah, so I have Adidas made a Kennel Cross yeah. wrestling shoe, and um, it was really, you know, I I don't want to downplay it, but I'm going to downplay sure. it because it was just nope. circumstantial. Um, what what uh what happened was I I chose to wrestle in those shoes in the Olympics, um, although. USA Wrestling had a contract with ASICS and um, I breached my contract to wear this shoe. You know, the, the contract with USA Wrestling, it was, it was, it was, a, you know, there was stipend involved and, and health insurance and all that stuff, but, and, and also a gear piece to it. And so I, I kind of was locked into having to, to do this contract with USA Wrestling right before the Olympics but I wanted to wear the Adidas shoe. And so I went to Adidas and say, look, man, I'm going to get, uh, I won't get penalized, but I won't receive any kind of bonus money if I, if I don't, uh, if I win. And the Adidas was like, look, just wear the shoe. We'll, we'll take care of it. And so I was the only American to wear the Adidas shoe. All the other, all the other nine athletes on the team were ASICs. And so after that, so then I go on and win. And after that Olympics, after Olympic year, Adidas agreed to put a, um, my name on a wrestling shoe. It was the first Adidas wrestling shoe to ever have a name on it. That's and I, it happened. It was just, uh, I think it was circumstantial, you know, yeah, it, you deserved it, it but it's cool. I, it's, it's, I love it. I love it. Can we get a pair of shoes for a thousand dollars? Two pair of shoes. I want a pair of shoes too. If I had one, you know, I have one pair. I have one pair. Oh, of so then, no, I don't want your shoe. Well, call you up have Adidas. your shoes. Call up Adidas we'll and say, you know, you got you want to re, you want to reinvigorate it. Oh, they do. We, we um, yeah, I have a. Yeah, there are so many people that um, want that shoe to come back out. I remember it was a great shoe. Well, we didn't have any money, so I couldn't afford your shoe. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was I kind of a little it was higher like end. Bucks. Yeah, I think Dad. it was like a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars two years ago. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a lot of, for us. So, so we we had some serious financial struggles. Serious financial struggles. And when I was first going into financial services business, just to talk about it, everyone said, "No, no, you're going to make it. 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 To, just, just keep pushing. Keep pushing. You're letting. You're laying the groundwork for later. And that delayed gratification and." And you getting on the shoe. I mean, I hope you have. You should have that pinned with with why not me? That's these are like some things that are icons. Um, but I, I want to just get to a couple last questions for you. Okay. If you were to break down, if you see behind me, um, I have our values, my personal values. If you said to, uh, if you said, what are the five values, your core values that you were to put down? If you were to say all the values out there, and there were five, what would they be? Five values. Um... I, I mean, you've said okay. a lot of them already, like your perseverance. I would say one, I, no, I, authenticity, you know, I live by it. I, I really, I, th I think that it's um, one trait that, or value, a core value is just being authentic, being yourself, um, you know, having that, hey, look, this is, this is how it is, you know, just, and not, uh, I don't know. I think it says it speaks for itself, just being authentic. Absolutely. I think I, um, I strive for that. And, um, I hope that that's something that I am considered is that I'm authentic. You as real, you're as real as anybody can be. I just want you to know, we talked to a lot of people. We talked to some great people. You're as real as anyone can be. Well, thank you. Um, Another thing that I think is important, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't put these in order or anything, but you know, I, 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 um, I try to live, I try to be balanced in my life. You know, I, you know, yeah, I work hard, but also, you know, take time off and so, and find balance. 
in my life. So I th- balance is important for me. So number just, two, even balance. when I was training, when I was, you know, you know, balls to the wall, um, you know, in, in these, si- these two Olympic cycles that I was in, you know, I was, uh, I cared more than people thought was wise, that kind of thing, you know, and I put everything into it. But I, when I left the room, I was able to shift and play and enjoy and, and, you know, go on a vacation and just find balance. I think it's it's with anything, you know, our bodies try to find balance with what we're eating, what we're taking in, what we're not. And, you know, we, as so, you know, there's that, you know, so um, I just think of the balance is, I just try to find balance. And if something's, if I'm feeling wrong, that's usually what it is. Um, And, you know, that, that leads to just, you know, being happy about yourself, about your situation, you know, balance leads to happiness. Is happiness a core value? Happiness is absolutely a core value. Okay. So, um, health, would you put in? Yeah. Health and mental and physical health, you know, that can kind of go back to balance too. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, ones that I want to be more of is I, 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 I wish I were more courageous in situations. Um, I think I, I get, um, I get stuck sometimes in, in making a decision or, um, just whatever it could be a life decision. It could be a work decision, but you know, but I, I want to be correct. I want to, I want to have courage, but that's not you. You're an incremental growth. You're not a, you're not a jump off the cliff growth. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you're just not that type of, unfortunately, you're just not that type of person. You're yeah. never going to be able to. So courage, I, not courage. I value that. In it. I value that. You value it, but it's not who you are. You can yeah. always, yeah, even if it's not Everything, who you are, you can always strive towards it and, and develop it if that's what you want. That's gold. Why yeah, that's I mean, gold. You, know, you can do whatever you want to do, just like you've said. Yeah. I think that does take courage, though. Like, a hundred percent. You just even taking yeah, a shot. Something out of your you know? comfort zone. Taking a Anything shot out of your comfort zone, zone takes courage. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that uh, courage, you can overlap that with, uh, you know, maybe um, – Precede it with determination, you know, um, geez, I, I know that I was incredibly determined to make an Olympic team and then win a medal and whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. And so I know that I've lived by that, you know, and um, I, I do vacillate when you know, I come in and out of it. But yeah, determination, I think that just just being headstrong and Determinate. Um, I have determination. Lower, cur- lower your head and lower your head and just go. Yep. And, determination, um, balance. And then, yeah. Um, well, authenticity. Well, authenticity. Well, ba- ba- determination, you know, balance, you know, authentic, authenticity, uh, courage, health and there was one more. No, health, health fit into balance. Balance, balance, control. balance. Courage, determination, kind of happiness, balance leads happiness to happiness. was in there. Um, okay, I'll say this. Um, I think I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic, almost to a fault. Like, I will g- give myself a chance. And, you know, I did it with wrestling so, so often. I do it when I'm in a hurry to get to where I'm going. You know, I think I can catch the red lights just right, you know, and make it, you know, it takes 10 minutes to get there and I can do it in eight. I know, you know, <laughs> those red so, lights. Uh, I just, yeah, <laughs> and it, um, I'm optimistic to a fault. And you know what? Optimism, optimism is, um, it's a good thing. It optimism gets off, you places. Really. Pes- optimism gets you pay- places. Pessimism keeps you at home. I'd rather be optimistic every day of the week. Yeah. If you take 100 episodes of optimism, 80 of them are going to be good. A hundred percent. I love it. I love it. Kendall, can you tell us where people can find you? Um, how do people connect with you? How do people give to you and, and to the cause, the, the, the selfless cause that you're doing uh, for the sport and for young people? And, and we need more coaches like you to help change the world. What's going on right now? You see with the young people, they're, they're praising horrible things and terrorism and rape and all this stuff. They need, they need disgusting what's going on. 
we need and 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 leaders like you for young people. It's not teachers anymore. It's coaches. Um, where can people find you? And and where can people learn more about you? Get involved to whatever whatever cause that you are you're leading. How, how, mm-hmm. Tell us that part. We'll start there. You know what? Um, I would my you know my training center, um, which we talked about a little bit. It's in it's New York City Regional Training Center. It's at nycrtc.org. And it, 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 you want to donate, I, which I would love, is um, nycrtc.org backslash donate. Done. And um, yeah, check us out. You know, see, see, see what, we, what, we, what we look like, who we are. Uh, I think that that website will help. You know, you can find us on Instagram, nycrtc, at nycrtc. Myself, Kendall Cross One. That's my Gmail or Instagram. Cool. Yeah, I think that's where you'll find me. Great. Kendall, thanks for uh, everything you do. We love you. We appreciate you. What you're doing, you're cha- you've, you've incrementally changed the world for better. So we appreciate that. And, it's, and changing the world for better is not an instant gratification. It's delayed gratification. The success, the success that you've had is, is an inspiration for everybody around the world. And everybody should see this. Um, and it's, it's really, really impressive. I know even for me as a young little wrestling boy getting my ass kicked, we had a poster from you on the wall. I think Why Not Me is really key, that everybody can achieve their dreams. You just have to do it over time. It's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but it will happen over time. And, and that's really a deep inspiration. Be courageous. Have fun in life. Be happy. Have a balance. Uh, be a good person. Be optimistic. It's, it's really, yeah. really deep. And, and of course, as always, for us, be resilient. Um, so, Kendall, yeah. thanks so much for coming on. We really you appreciate bet. it. Bet. I really enjoyed it, man. Thanks for having me. And, and you know, listeners, if there are kids, whatever, whoever, if you want to shoot me an email, man, feel free. I will try my level best to to get back to you. Um, it's Kendall Cross One at Gmail dot com. So, I I would uh yeah, feel we'll, free. Okay, we'll put it right. We'll put it in the bio. All right. Thank you, Kendall, for coming on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, take care.